thank you for the opportunity to talk. They, they say this was a JC project, but actually it was a uh, community endeavor from, head of, from the head of the national companies to the jail inmates. And ex my experience with the head of a company, I went into his house, was put in by his, his um, um, man, and he went into his desk, and he was sitting behind his desk, and he says, you came to see me about what? And we laid out the map and showed him what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. And he studied it, and he said it took about 15 minutes. He says, okay, uh, Timpkin will do the, the administration building. And uh, then uh, he reached in his desk and pulled out his checkbook and gave me, he says, here's something personally for it, a $500 check to cover some expenses. And then we went down and we saw the Lavin for Sugardale. And they said they'd take care of Noah's Ark. And he said that uh, the queen sign put up a spider nest with a spider on it. And the superintendent of park in Florida said he would make the Humpty Dumpty, Jack and the Beanstalk, and other fairyland features for uh, just the cost of the material. And the Ohio National Guard airlifted uh, the equipment and uh, uh, to um, Canton, and as it was coming up, they'd say, this is Humpty Dumpty coming over the wall. And they had a big time talking to the radio thing. And Jack the Beanstalk looked from in. And the Ohio National Guard then flew over a plane about three days before. And then about a week later, why, we had the plane in the, in the land donated by the Ohio National Guard. And Carl Wise, park superintendent, did a tremendous job. He remembered, moved cement blocks from up in the corner where they tearing down a block of a, a bank and put them down in there. And we tried to move them and we couldn't move them. But we came back in the next day and the kids had moved them that night. He got voting in the old voting booths and put them in for barns. And he even went to the jail and got inmates that were allowed to come out and help him. Solinsky moved to train in, and the union help was terrific. The union help uh, was cement uh, union, took that and did a new type of cementing called gunite and to build Willie the Whale in the pond and make, make steel hair. And uh, then the carpenters union built the carpenter house for us, and um, my wife's father, Ganegi, was one of the the carpenters, he says that was the hardest job they ever did, building a crooked house. And then the painting, the painters union came in and did the painting. And the, and the guy's name was G-U-I-S-T, and he pronounced it Quist. But then they came in, they says, hey, Geist, where do you want this paint? And he threw his brush down, he says, dang it, I guess we're going to have to call our name Geist from now on. And then the, the crowning glory action was Timkins sending up a crew, clean up crew and equipment to clean up mud and debris from a flooding on the opening day. And I hoped that Mother Gooseland would be here when I was gone, but Mother Gooseland has had a day, and everything around has changed with television and everything. This is and this is now a new art art park day. Thank you. Yes. And thank you. You've heard a lot of, uh, of plans for a forward, but I'm going to bring back a lot of memories. You're standing on a golf, uh, on a tennis court right now. It used to be a tennis court when we first started. But this, they said it was a JC project. It wasn't a JC project, but a com community endeavor from the head of the national companies like Bill Umstadt and to the, they even brought in jail inmates to help build the park. And our, my experience with Gumstock was uh, we were ushered in his house one night, and the guy left us in, and Bill was sitting in the, at the desk, and he said, you came to see me about what? And we said, well, we'd like to talk to you about Mother Gooseland. And we laid a map out in front of him, and he looked it over, and he took about 10 or 15 minutes to ask us some questions. He said, Timpkin Roller Bearing will build the administration building. 
And then he reached in his desk, pulled out his checkbook, and he gave us $500 and said, this is for incidental things. And then we also had Noah's Ark, Lamb from the Sugardale. They came out here and seen what we was going to do. And they said, we'll build Noah's Ark and we'll put all the animals in it so people can see. And then um, Queen Stein built a, uh, a mess and put a spider in it. And uh, there we all could see. But the superintendent of park in Florida did us a wonderful job where we first got the idea. You see out there in Hayden? He built that. And he built a lot of the other Humpty Dumpty, Jack and the Beanstalk, and the very other fairyland features that we had. And he only charges for the material. He did everything free. But the best thing was that the Ohio National Guard, we didn't know how it was going to get up here, and they said, we'll fly it up. And they went down to Florida, picked it up, and then when they went past the uh, radio station as opposed to, they said, this is Humpty Dumpty going on the wall. And then they said, here's Jack and the Beanstalk playing the thing that can't go higher from Florida. And this brings back a lot of memories. And then you saw a picture of an airplane over here. A week before it got here, it flew over another goose line. And then they brought it down and that was here for the rest of the park. And Carl Weiss, park superintendent, did a terrific job. He helped us move cement blocks from up on uh, Tusk and Cleveland down here. And we tried to lift them and we broke a uh, equipment. But we came back the next morning and the kids had already moved. And they brought the voting booths to make a, a place for uh, people to go into and see. And then the best thing he did, he went out to the jail and got inmates out of the jail that could come out of here and they did their work on the ground and cleaned up the ground. So it was a community project. And Solinsky, we wondered how we were going to get the train that was donated to us here. Solinsky said, we'll move it here. And they moved it and parked it right over there. You should have seen that movie. That was terrific. Union help. You never, I never expected union help, but you'd be surprised. The cement men, that was a new outfit that they put there for Willie the Blue Well. It's called uh, a new type of spray in the cement on, and they built that for us for free. And then you've got the carpenters union. They came in and they built the carpet house. They said that's the worst thing we ever did. We <laughs> could never understand how it could be done. And uh, I have to say, I'm glad to tell you because my wife's father was one of the partners on it. He said it was terrible building that. And then the painting, the painters union donated painting for everything we needed painting. And the guy's name was G-U-I-S-T. They pronounced it Gist. And the guy came in one day and said, hey guys, where do you want this paint? And he threw his brush down and he said, I guess I'll have to pronounce my name Gist from now on instead of Gist. And he did. But the crowning action Kicked in road repairing the day we had a flood and mud and everything here. They sent up their working crew and equipment and they cleaned up this park so we could have an opening day. And they spent all day morning uh, cleaning it up from Timken free of charge. I had hoped that uh, Mother Gooseland would be here when I was born. Mother Gooseland has had its day because now they've got television and different shows. And this now. Things have changed, and this is now a good day for Park Park Day. And I thank you for the opportunity. It brought back a lot of memories, and I could tell you a lot more, but uh, I only had five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Guys. Pleasure having you here today. For those of you that have memories you want to share, there's a table up front that you can record them or take some information with you and forward it to the Park District. Uh, we want to accumulate all the history we can. 